so hello everyone again and welcome to my channel so excited to be back again and talk to you about electricity and magnetism and the applications of this particular method or techniques that combines both properties in here now in our part one video we talked about a velocity selector and how this is actually used to actually determine the charge of a particle and the velocity at which a charged particle is moving at when it's in both an electrical field and a magnetic field. Now, in this video, we'll be looking at another experiment that is really, really crucial for we understanding the behavior of electrons. And this particular method is called the Thomson's electron per mass experiment, also appealed by calling the cathode ray experiment. So, in here, we have the experiment device here. I would say this is a skeletal, graphic of this particular instrument and here we're going to label at the same time describe how this is actually being used to actually determine the charge of an electron now first of all we have a particular potential which is actually giving us the velocity of our particular electrons in here but in here we have our voltage that is being generated in here and this voltage is actually connected to the anode now before talking about the anode let's talk about this particular part here this is actually a cathode and this cathode is actually very hot and the heat that is applied to this particular electrode excites a huge amount of electrons that is actually targeted towards the anode so huge amount of electrons are actually moved from the cathode over to this first anode I'll call this anode 1 and in here I call anode 2. So in between these anodes here we have streamline of electrons that are actually passing in between this particular electrode here well anode and this other anode here. So what happens next is that once the electrons comes out they approach this particular slit and there are actually two plates over here we have the P1 which is actually positively charged and in here we have P2 which is actually negatively charged now take note that these two are actually having an electrical field which is actually pointing downwards as the electrical field are actually being generated in here we actually form an electrical force in here and on the other side we have a force that is perpendicular to that of this electrical field and that force is actually the magnetic field that is between these two particular magnets over here now it's actually the fields here are perpendicular to each other both the electrical field and magnetic field and this is done in such a way that the electrons will be able to actually go in a straight line and pass through this slit without any form of deflection and then what happens next is that they actually hit the center of this particular detector region over here or suppose you can call it a screen now let's look at a little bit of the mathematics behind this particular process here first of all what we have is the gain of kinetic energy from here and the loss of electric potential in here now if you look at those we have the gain of kinetic energy which is half mv squared and the loss of electrical energy or electrical potential which is ev now if you solve for our velocity what we have is this particular formula velocity equals to 2 ev over the mass now once you're able to look at this then this will be able to actually determine the velocity of the electrons as it's moving from the cathode over here to this particular first anode which is anode prime over here now the next one is looking at how the electrons are actually passing through a straight line through this particular two plates which is p1 p2 or positive and negative charge plates over here now Take note that in our velocity selector, we actually determine the velocity to be dependent on the electrical field and the magnetic field. Now, 
what happens next is that take note also that this is actually equal to square root of 2 ev over m which is gotten from our original equation which is what we have over here now our focus now is this two equations and we're going to play around with it which is to be able to solve for our electron per mass ratio in here and this actually is equal to e squared over 2 voltage multiplied by the magnetic field all squared so this case we are able to actually determine the electron to mass ratio which is the charge to mass of an electron and this doesn't depend on the following it doesn't depend on the cathode material it doesn't depend on the residue that is actually in that particular tube in here at all all what it depends on is the electrical field the voltage and that of the magnetic field over there so as a result of that what we get is our number which is the charge to mass ratio to be equal to 1.758820150 times 10 to the power 11 coulomb per kilogram which is our number for the charge to mass ratio of an electron so Thompson did an amazing job in performing this experiment and giving us this fantastic number that we actually use in various interests in chemistries and all the same thanks for following me through this particular process I truly appreciate it hit the comment down below let me hear your thoughts and let's see you all on my next video have a good day peace love you all and be smart bye